Warning, this video contains super awesome content not suitable for people who don't enjoy super awesomeness. So today we're gonna to be checking out the largest volcano ever. Finally waking up and cracking open the earth, bro. That's kinda of scary, man. The world's biggest volcano ever. I need you guys to take a minute. The world's biggest volcano is finally waking up. It's waking up now in 2022, bruh. Bruh, I don't know if you guys are a little nervous, but I'll be a little nervous, a concerned about that. It's cracking open the earth. Here you can see a map of the island of Hawaii. This Hawaii. island is home to Mauna Loa and the other four volcanoes that make up the island of Hawaii. If you believe the world will end because of an asteroid, you might want to reconsider because the end could come from directly beneath your feet. Oh. If you trace a line on a map from northern Nevada through southern Idaho and up into northwest Wyoming, you'll see an intermittent scar of volcanic mayhem that stretches 350 Yo, miles, National Park? 560 kilometers, and dates back 18 million years. Supervolcanoes are likely to have killed more people than asteroids. Although it was previously believed that these massive volcanoes would take thousands of years to build and remain trapped beneath the Earth's crust for an equal number of years before having any impact on the globe, new evidence suggests otherwise. It's happening new sooner. studies suggest that these catastrophic eruptions, thousands of times more powerful than Mount St. Helens' 1980 eruption, might happen at any time. Is humanity on the verge of an apocalypse? Wow, just hearing that alone, bro. Honestly, just hearing that alone is kind of scary, man. Just thinking about it. This can erupt anytime. They didn't even know when it can erupt, man. Something could piss it off or some kind of weather, climate change or something. And that shit could just boom. Bruh, I don't know, man. I'm, I don't think we're ready for that. At least not. I didn't think it would happen in my lifetime, at least. Could a supervolcano be on the verge of erupting? Is it true what would bring about the end of humanity lurks just under our feet? Few things are as awe-inspiring as a volcanic eruption. They can't even be stopped or prevented. But what is a volcano and how does a volcano erupt? Let's dive into a bit of interesting geography. Many mountains form by folding, faulting, uplifting and erosion of the Earth's crust. Volcanic terrain, however, is built by the slow accumulation of erupted lava. The vent may be visible as a small bowl-shaped depression at the summit of a cone or shield-shaped mountain. Through a series of cracks within and beneath the volcano, the vent connects to one or more links storage areas of molten or partially molten rock or magma. Okay. This connection to fresh magma allows the volcano to erupt repeatedly in the same location. In this way, the volcano grows ever larger until it's no longer stable. Pieces of the volcano collapse as rock falls or as land slides. When molten rock below the surface of the Earth rises through volcanic vents, it is known as magma. However, after yeah, erupting from a volcano, it becomes it. lava. Magma is made of molten rock, crystals, and dissolved gas. Picture an unopened bottle of soda with grains of sand inside. The molten rock is made of the chemicals oxygen, silicon, aluminium, iron, magnesium, calcium, See that? sodium, that potassium, know. titanium, and manganese. After cooling, liquid magma may form crystals of various minerals until it becomes solid and forms igneous or touch magmatic that, rock. You Originating don't want to touch many that. tens of miles beneath the ground, magma is lighter than surrounding solid rock. It is driven towards Earth's surface by buoyancy. It is lighter than the surrounding rock and by pressure from gas within it. Magma forces its way upward and may ultimately break through weak areas in the Earth's crust. If so, an eruption begins. Magma can erupt in several ways. Sometimes molten rock pours from the vent as fluid lava flows. It that's can also what, shoot we want, right? violently into the air as dense clouds of rock shards or tephra. I think it's the dense clouds that we don't want. We don't want the dense clouds at all because it kind of blocks the sun and just kills everything. The lava, slow-moving lava, maybe we can deal with because, you know, you, you can get out the way and shit like that. But once it's up in the air blocking all the clouds, mm, no sun coming through, we have a problem. ...and gas. Larger fragments fall back around the vent and tephra clouds may move down the volcano slope under the force of gravity. Ash, tiny pieces of tephra, the thickness of a strand of hair, may be carried by the wind only to fall to the ground many miles away. The smallest ash particles may be erupted miles into the sky and are carried many times worldwide by See, winds high in the atmosphere that. 
before they fall to the ground. That's all we don't want. So how many volcanoes are there? Too the many US Geological Survey, USGS, tracks over 160 active and potentially active volcanoes in the United States alone. There are Jeez. about 1,350 potentially active volcanoes worldwide. About 500 of these have erupted in the past 100 years. Many of these are located around the Pacific Ocean in what is known as the Ring of Fire. However, there is a type of volcano not included in the numbers above. It's an underwater volcano. You yeah. may not know about these underwater volcanoes because they usually happen far away, but that does not make them any less dangerous. Really? In fact, most I would have volcanic it was activities less dangerous. happen beneath the ocean. Two-thirds of all volcanic activity occurs in the deep sea. So how does an underwater volcano form? Same Actually, thing, right? there is no difference in the formation yeah, of submarine say. or underwater and sub-aerial or on-land volcanoes. I figured it would have been like the same thing, man, because it just pushes out, right, from from beneath the earth. That's all it does, so I, I can't see why there will be a difference, right? Volcanoes. Underwater volcanoes also form when molten rock is produced in the second layer of the Earth's interior and makes its way through the crust. As Tamsin Mather, a volcanologist and professor of Earth Sciences volcanologist? at the University that of Oxford, like puts it, out of Star most Trek. submarine volcanism is associated volcanism. with continuously active volcanism along mid-ocean ridges, where two tectonic plates you guys know the are pulling Vulcans, apart. Right? Star Trek? The collision of two plates can also cause a volcano. If both the tectonic plates are beneath the ocean, then the volcano will develop underwater, said Hilo. Over That's time, what we want, right? they may grow to form volcanic islands, he added. Volcanic activity within a single tectonic plate can also result in the formation of a volcano. This can happen when a hot spot is underneath an oceanic plate, creating a chain of volcanic islands like Hawaii. One of the notable volcanic eruptions is the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano. Whoa, I Kingdom cannot say that Tonga. three times fast. In addition to sending ash tens of thousands of kilometers into space, the volcano also caused a horrific tsunami that killed five people and sent shockwaves across the world twice. This wow. is a taste of what's to come. Due to its high activity and proximity to human areas, Mauna Loa, the largest volcano, has been consistently monitored over the centuries. Mauna Loa has been erupting for 700,000 years. It is one of the world's most active volcanoes, with the first recorded eruption in 1843 and the most recent in 1984. In 1930, wow. the U.S. Geological Survey published a geologic map There's nothing of the they can do? Islands that shows the many layers left by the eruptions of both Mauna Loa and the adjacent Kilauea volcano. There are five above-ground volcanoes on the island of Hawaii, but Mauna Loa is the world's largest, accounting for more than half of the island's surface area. The wow, that's crazy size! Five thousand two hundred and seventy-one square kilometers, two thousand and thirty-five square miles, and a maximum breadth of about one hundred and twenty kilometers, seventy-five miles. You don't want to be around there, bro. The vast majority when that of the shit erupts, huge you don't want to be around there. Is submerged at fifty-six thousand feet. 17,170 meters tall, Mauna Loa is nearly twice the height of Mount Everest, as measured from the ocean floor's depressed crust to its highest point. Mauna Loa appears poised to erupt right in front of us, and its odds of erupting again are estimated to be about 100%, with possibly catastrophic consequences, according to scientists. Let's go back to underwater volcanoes wow. because you are probably yo 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 that's some scary shit right there man 100% so guaranteed this volcano is going to erupt bro within more likely if you guys are watching this video your lifetime my lifetime more likely this this is going to erupt yo that's some scary shit to think about that's just think about that for a minute what what are you guys what are you what are you gonna do? What can you do, man? Unless you like rich and you can fly over to the other side of the earth, but what can you actually do? Wondering what happens when a volcano erupts underwater. The impact of an underwater volcano eruption Can't depends bad, on its right? proximity to the water's surface. Just be hot. If the eruption happens at very great depths underwater, then the weight of the overlying water acts as a pressure cap. For example, if a piece of molten rock enters the sea 2 kilometers or 1.24 miles below the surface, it will come into contact with cold seawater and cool very quickly. That's the not, water we will want, get right? very hot, but it won't turn into steam. The story is very different if the water is shallow enough. 
the magma starts to heat the water, which is then converted into steam, creating a big volume change. Steam explosions are really destructive because a small volume of water turns into a huge volume of steam. Aside from the risk of tsunamis, the mass of ash ejected into the air when an underwater volcano erupts in shallow water can seriously impact people's health. So they're just the as bad. The ash and emitted gases not only pollute the air, but can affect access to electricity and water supplies. Because they are underwater, submarine volcanoes are challenging to study. Due to their inherent inaccessibility, only a few active sites have been studied in detail. However, scientists working on land can learn about the history of a volcano by visiting the volcano sites and gathering data. This can See, I don't know if I want to be one of those guys, though. I wouldn't be one of those guys that actually go to these sites, because I'm like thinking, what if you're on a site one day, you know, and, and that, it just explodes. Like, it just decides, hey, today's the day. Then what? Then what? You got, where, you, where are you going? You running for your life? Or even like just fallen ashes, man. I don't want no fallen ash burning. What? Because if that thing fallen ash hits you, that's melting through your skin, my guy. That is going right through your skin, like legit. Think of that. Think of the hottest thing you possibly can, but like 100%, 100 times worse than that. Just melted, melted through your your skin. Can be done using cliff sequences or digging holes and collecting materials for underwater volcanoes. Scientists usually have to rely on marine surveys and mapping technology like sonar. Even the threat of thermonuclear war or global warming would pale in comparison to an event like this, which would produce an ash cloud that would be capable of obscuring the sun. That's Millions what I said earlier, would see? Be wiped off over many years of freezing temperatures if this were to happen. While Mauna Loa is the world's largest active volcano, there are certain supervolcanoes that the world should hope to avoid. It turns out that the question with supervolcanoes isn't whether they could wipe out all life on the planet. It when? It's a question of when it'll do it again. According to some scientific Ooh. evidence, more than 95% of the world's plant and animal species may have been wiped out by an enormous supervolcano that erupted 250 million years ago. Thank yes, God. you heard that. A long right. time ago. Around 200 million years ago, a so supervolcano erupted with such force that it wiped out. 75% of the planet's inhabitants. It was so mad. Think about that, man. Think about it for a minute. 75%, bro. Bro, th there's a lot more of us now. Okay, a lot more people now. I don't think we will survive this. Like, where are you going to go? Mount Everest, where are you going? Like, the average person probably won't survive. Me, you, we probably will survive. We don't got the money. We ain't rich. Maybe, maybe like, the, the, the billionaires... Maybe the, the politicians, they'll probably survive those guys. But like me and you, c'est la vie. You know, it was a good life. Massive that it split North America and Africa apart, forming the Atlantic Ocean in the process. Wow. The volcano Camp, Central Atlantic Magmatic Province, erupted That's over and over crazy for 600,000 years. And there's bad news for those of us who live in areas where volcanoes aren't a problem. It wasn't that lava had covered everything in sight or the volcanic ash had rained down so heavily that everything was choked. Instead, it was the aftermath of the event's pollution. CO2 and carbon levels, for example, soared. The environment had been harmed. Only a few things managed to recover. It's worth noting that after the disaster, dinosaurs were able to evolve and take over before their own tragic end, demonstrating that no one wins for long. However, some rogue scientists believe that dinosaurs were wiped out 65 million years ago by a volcano, not an asteroid. Wow. There have been remarkable underwater volcanic eruptions, and we will dwell on their powerful impact next. Let's look at the most powerful underwater volcano ever recorded. What's this? In 2018, the largest Tw 2018? underwater eruption ever recorded birthed a giant skyscraper-sized underwater volcano. The insane thing about the eruption is that is scientists are still making discoveries about it. Is this Tal volcano? Discovered. Scientists discovered the 2,690 foot or 820 meters tall volcano in the western Indian Ocean of okay, Madagascar never mind, never following mind. a puzzling spate of earthquakes that struck near what is usually a seismically quiet area. After gathering geological data, including information from a 2019 underwater survey of the region, the team realized that there was a new submarine volcano about one and a half times the height of New York's One World Trade Center. 
What's more, this new volcano draws from the deepest volcanic magma reservoir known to scientists. According to lead researcher Natalie Fuey, a marine geoscientist at the Paris Institute of Earth Physics (IPGP) at the University of Paris, the source That's of the magma, lot, man. that is the reservoir, is very deep, about 34 miles or 55 kilometers underground. It was the first time in volcanology that they could see such a deep reservoir at the base of the lithosphere, the outer shell of Earth that includes the upper mantle and crust. Between May 2018 and May 2021, more than 11,000 detectable earthquakes shook Mayotte, a small island and French territory between Madagascar and Mozambique. The most powerful earthquake was a magnitude 5.9, but there were also strange seismic hums or very low frequency earthquakes that originated deep underground. They couldn't be felt at the surface, but they were picked up by seismometers around the world. These very low frequency earthquakes are associated with volcanic activity. This sudden seismic activity was surprising given that only two earthquakes have been detected near Mayotte since 1972 okay. and until now, the most recent volcanic was left at least 4,000 4, years ago. Okay. In July 2018, scientists were stunned when they discovered that Mayotte was moving eastward at about 7.8 inches or 20 centimeters a year as detected through GPS data. At that point in time, the island had only three or four GPS stations, so scientists installed global navigation satellite systems and ocean bottom seismometers around the island to learn more about the geological changes occurring there. The findings were extraordinary. The combined land and ocean bottom seismometers picked up 17,000 events between February and May 2019. In any serious discussion of underwater volcanoes, you will hear about Tamu Massif. This water is the size of New Mexico or the British Isles. Tamu Massif is located under the Pacific Ocean, about 1,000 miles or 1,600 kilometers east of Japan. Okay. Tamu Massif is the biggest volcano on the planet and also competes for the biggest in the entire solar system. The entire solar system, bro. How do how, how do these guys know this? Like, how do scientists just like guess and like say in the entire in, like how have they ever been to any other like planets outside? Of the Earth, I don't think so. The closest we ever been to was Mars. Was not even Mars. Sorry, the Moon, and that's not even a planet, bro. I don't know. They just. I think they're just guessing, man. I'm just saying. I just. I just a wild guess. I don't think so. No one actually has the proof to say. Yeah, it's the whole solar system now. It is in the same league as Olympus Mons on Mars, which had been considered to be the largest volcano in the solar system. Mars has volcanoes too. Misconceptions about Tamu Massif. The scientists thought it was a composite of smaller like, did structures. You guys, do you guys think that Mars has Mar uh, has uh, volcanoes? Do you guys honestly think though? Put in the comments down below. I want to know how many of you guys actually knew that Mars had volcanoes. Comments down below. But now they have confirmed that the mighty volcano was just a giant volcano. Temo Massif is a rounded dome that measures about 280 by 400 miles or 450 by 650 kilometers or more than 100,000 square miles. Its top lies about 6,500 feet, which is about 2,000 meters below the ocean surface. The base goes down to a depth of about 4 miles or 6.4 kilometers. Tamu Massif makes the largest active volcano on Earth, Mauna Loa in Hawaii, Looks which small. measures about 2,000 square miles or 5,200 square kilometers, look like a child's toy. Wow. Made of basalt, Tamu Massif is the oldest and largest feature of an oceanic plateau called the Shatsky Rise, in the northwestern Shasky Pacific rise? Ocean. Okay. The total area of the rise that is seems... equivalent to the landmass of either Japan or California. The name Tamu Massif combines the institution the scientists came from and a French word. Tamu means Texas A and M University, while Massif, Massif is French for massive and is a scientific term for a large mountain. So the scientists believe that Tamu Massif was created by a single volcano and probably over a short period of time. Wow. That actually took that a few quick. million years. But on the a few times, million there, years, bro. Take billions of I, years. These guys say a few million years. I would love to live for a few million years, guys. Like, put in the comments down below if you guys want to live for a few million years. <laughs> it's quite short. The volcano went extinct or inactive not long after it formed. That was probably in the late Jurassic to early Cretaceous period, about 145 million years ago. How That's did it. Not too far. Form? It seems the spot on the seafloor had the right mix of elements, including a boundary of three tectonic plates, 
a thin crust, and a source of hot magma below that was able to bubble up to the surface. The molten rock poured out and then built up a wide, gradual rise as it cooled. However, just how the magma made it to the surface has not been established. Perhaps a blob of the rock got superheated and then rose to the surface due to buoyancy, or cracks in the overlying crust could have opened, allowing molten rock to spill out. No one will really know. Like, we're just taking guesses at this point. Nobody's going to know. Are, sometimes they go unnoticed, and scientists have to find clues after the fact to piece together what happened. This was the case that made These are some of the smartest people on the planet, though. So. Pumice, up to five meters thick, that covered 400 square kilometers of ocean. Giant hunks of what? pumice the size of SUVs strewn across kilometers of the sea floor, a thick layer of sticky ash, and 14 lava flows. These are the clues that scientists hope will lead them to solve the mystery of the largest deep ocean volcanic eruption on record. We'll go back to 2012 when the Havre Seamount exploded with a volcanic eruption that was one and a half times the size of the Mount Helens eruption in the United States. No one noticed anything about these outbursts from the Earth's crust until a few days later. That was when an airline passenger looked out the window as she flew over the Pacific Ocean. At 800 kilometers north of Auckland, she spotted an enormous floating raft of pumice and quickly took a photo, which she sent to a geologist. Unknown to this wow. passenger, she had set in motion an international effort to solve the mystery of an underwater volcano. Later, in October of that year, the NIWA research vessel Tangaroa carried out a scan of the Havre volcano using an echo sounder. Creating a map from the data, scientists discovered that the map was quite different from how the seamount had looked when it was discovered in 2002. This actually confirmed other evidence suggesting that Havre was indeed the volcano that had erupted. Three years later, a group of scientists headed to Havre intending to create a more detailed map of the volcano, taking photos and collecting rock samples. Of course, the evidence of the submarine eruptions that these scientists were looking for is hidden beneath hundreds of meters of seawater. This made Way it very low. difficult to study, but an invention came to the rescue – underwater robots. The remote-operated vehicle, ROV Jason, was connected to the research ship with a fiber-optic cable allowing the operators to see what the ROV was looking at as they drove it around. The underwater robot was also able to take photos and collect samples. The automated underwater vehicle AUV Sentry was pre-programmed to follow a set route as it took photos and measured water chemistry. By the end of the expedition, the team had generated a much more detailed digital map of the volcano. This map revealed numerous lava flows, a widespread ash layer, and millions of enormous pumice blocks up to 9 meters across wow. scattered over the ocean floor. The robot also collected Still a erupted. number of large pieces of pumice. One of the things scientists tried to discover was the nature of the eruption. Volcanoes could be explosive or effusive. Explosive means, well, the volcano explodes, while effusive means the lava flows steadily form a vent. This is where the scientists found themselves so what do at want? crossroads because the ash supports an explosive eruption while the pumice and lava point to an effusive eruption. Speaking of volcanic eruptions, Huaynaputina is the site of the largest volcanic eruption ever recorded in South America. The explosion was so powerful that it sent mud flows down to the Pacific Ocean, 75 miles or 120 kilometers away. Jeez, that's, that's a lot, eruption, my guy. Which happened in 1600 affected the global climate because the summers following the eruption were some of the coldest in 500 years. Ash from the explosion yeah, deluged a 20 square mile or 50 square kilometer area to the mountains west, and you can still see the ash today. Although Huaynaputina in Peru is a lofty 16,000 feet, 4,850 meters, you can still see the ash till today, bro. I don't believe that. Go. It stands along the edge of a deep canyon, and its peak doesn't have the dramatic silhouette often associated with volcanoes. The Huaynaputina volcano damaged two close cities of Arequipa and Moquengua, and it I would actually like to visit some of these places, man. See this the volcanic like eruption of Krakatoa was more recent, but no less deadly. It spent months giving warning rumblings before finally erupting on April 26th and 27th. The explosive eruption of this stratovolcano, situated along a volcanic island arc at the subduction zone of the Indo-Australian plate, shot out huge amounts of rock, ash, and pumice. The terrifying sound was heard thousands of miles away. The volcanic explosion also created a tsunami whose maximum wave heights reached 140 feet. Oh to 40 meters. my god, that is high, my guy. About 30, that can wipe out people. easy. More than 7,000 miles away, the Arabian Peninsula recorded an increase in the wave heights of tidal gauges. 
The island that housed Krakatoa was completely Surfers destroyed must have in the loved eruption. That. However, new eruptions beginning in December 1927 built the Anak Krakatau, meaning Child of Krakatau, cone in the center of the caldera produced by the 1883 eruption. Anak Krakatau randomly comes to life and builds a new island in the shadow of its parent. One of the largest eruptions in the 20th century was the Santa Maria in 1902. The Where's violent that? explosion in Guatemala came after the volcano but remained silent for roughly 500 years. It created a large crater nearly a mile across on the mountain's southwest side. Good this electrical tree-covered volcano the is ash? part of a chain of stratovolcanoes that rises along Guatemala's Pacific coastal plain. It has experienced continuous activity since its last blast. And people just lived through like nothing. Tree, that is which normal. Occurred in it's normal. In 1929, Santa Maria spewed forth a pyroclastic flow, which claimed hundreds of lives and may have taken the lives of as many as 5,000 people. Because people can get out. Another volcanic eruption that changed the world is the Thera eruption in I, Greece. I wonder if they're going to talk about uh, Thera not erupted 3,000 years ago. In this video. The map of the world would have looked is different. It? it is believed to be the single most powerful explosive event ever witnessed. There blew a large hole in the island of Santorini and sent the whole of the ancient Mediterranean on a different course. The eruption also had political effects. It completely destroyed the Minoan culture, which was the most dominant in the region at the time. While historians and archaeologists can't agree on the year Thera exploded, there have been suggestions ranging from 1645 Look BC to 1500 BC. But what is not in doubt is the evidence from ash deposits found in the ocean floor that they made a the movie about this, didn't they? force that humans have never witnessed. The picture would Perkeus, be easier Perkeus, to piece I'm... together because no first-person account of the event exists, but researchers have been able to bench it against the Krakatoa volcanic eruption. Thera killed more than 40,000 people in just a few hours and generated colossal tsunamis 40 feet tall. It also sent volcanic ash across that's, Asia, that's, that's, causing that's a drop scary. in global temperatures. It even created strangely colored sunsets for three years. People heard the terrifying blast 3,000 miles away. Wow. Scientists say Thera's eruption was four or five times more powerful than Krakatoa. It exploded with the energy of several hundred atomic bombs in a fraction of a second. Meanwhile, scientists have not found human remains and valuables belonging to the Minoan residents of Santorini. This suggests they were able to predict the eruption and evacuate the island on time. Based on the nearby island of Crete, the powerful Minoan civilization declined suddenly soon after Thera's explosion. Tsunamis spawned by the eruption would have swamped its naval fleet and coastal villages first off, according to historians. The drop in temperatures caused by the massive amount of sulfur dioxide kind of glad I don't live right beside a lake or any oceans. also led to years of cold like, wet it, I summers I in the region, ruining agricultural harvests. The lethal combination destroyed every notable Minoan stronghold in less than 50 years. This led to a free-for-all in the political vacuum created, leading to the warring city-state system of ancient Greece that would dominate the Mediterranean. The Aegean would turn out to be a fundamental building block for the history of Europe, and the Minoan decline changed its early foundation completely. So are we at risk of another catastrophic eruption? You said 100% yes, sure? In a nutshell. Yellowstone Park is home to a caldera that would scare the socks off everyone on the planet, not just you. This is why if I don't go to Yellowstone. If the supervolcano were to be far away from it the would place. bring the entire world to its knees and obliterate all life on Earth. An estimated 2,100,000 years old, the Yellowstone volcano has erupted approximately every 600,000 to 700,000 years and since wouldn't tell its us. formation. Since the last they eruption was 640,000 years ago, we can't be sure if the supervolcano would explode in the same manner as in the past. This will not be the first civilization to be at the mercy of a supervolcano if Yellowstone supervolcano decides to erupt. Mount Vesuvius, a supervolcano, was historically recognized for destroying an entire civilization in 79 AD. On a this, scale this of the 0 wonder. to 8, the eruption received an 8 rating. Archaeologists Jeez. are still excavating That's the scary, of my guy. to find old artifacts. That's the scary thing when think about it. For those who perished in the blaze. Although scientists keep an eye on earthquakes, ground deformation, stream flow, and temperature changes, God, we got these stone, people it's not care certain everything. how much notice no, a supervolcano will provide before erupting. Smaller eruptions from supervolcanoes relieve the pressure on the magma chamber on a periodic basis. More than 80 non-explosive lava-producing eruptions have occurred at Yellowstone in the 640,000 years since Lava Creek. 
and the next eruption is more likely to be on the size of Pinatubo than a supervolcano. But what if we're not dealt a favorable hand? Yeah, the worst what would possible. the effects of a Yellowstone supervolcanic eruption be? Most super eruptions happen in locations that are active for millions of years but then become quiet for a long time. So don't put your faith in Yellowstone's seeming peace. Looks Overall, so nice. Longer dormancy leads to greater growth in most cases. Yellowstone rests on a long active tectonic zone with a weakened and thinned crust overlying it a 2,500 Fahrenheit, 1,370 degrees Celsius magma dome rising from the upper mantle, similar to other supervolcanic locations. This dome has melted and broken through the crust, forming two magma chambers that are around 5 to 7 miles, 8 to 11 kilometers beneath, and both measure more than 30 miles, 48 kilometers broad. These magma chambers are filled with a mixture of magma, semi-solid rock, and dissolved gases such as carbon dioxide and water vapor. Additional magma builds up over hundreds and thousands of years, delivering more heat and pressure and gradually forcing the overlying ground upward. When a consistent supply of hot magma is delivered to the chamber, pressure builds in a cyclical process known as incubation. If it doesn't, some of the material will solidify and sink, releasing the pressure. Because of the massive size of a supervolcano's magma chamber, incubation necessitates a heat delivery rate two to three orders of magnitude higher than a typical volcano. Fractures form along the dome's periphery as a result of excessive pressure, which allows air to escape the chamber. As the gas-filled magma erupts, pyroclastic flows, fast-moving, thick clouds of gas, ash, and rock boiling out from the eruption at 1,470 degrees Fahrenheit, 800 degrees Celsius, cover tens of thousands of square miles, raining ash and debris. Additional blasts will be sent out on a weekly basis. On a regional scale, ash falls down, polluting the atmosphere and blanketing tens of millions of square miles with inches of crop-killing ash. Anyone within thousands of miles of the we explosion gone. risks inhaling microscopic glass needles, Ooh. shattering pulmonary blood vessels, and drowning in a slurry of ash and lung moisture until it settles. As a result of the ash falling from the sky, polluting the water supply and clogging up vehicle engines, food supply, transportation, communication, Everything. and economic crises can develop that can last we'll months drop. or years. Global average temperatures are expected to drop 5 to 9 degrees Fahrenheit, 3 to 5 degrees Celsius within a matter of weeks due to an unexpected buildup of dust and sulfuric acid aerosols over the globe. Three feet of hazardous volcanic ash would engulf a third of the United States, rendering it uninhabitable for months, if not wow, years, Wow, that's crazy. in places like Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. To put it in perspective, a Yellowstone explosion would be 25,000 times larger than Mount St. Helens. It wouldn't necessarily be the lava flows and ash that killed you. It could be the terrible fallout from the lava flows and ash that destroyed the Midwest or the global cooling that resulted. There are currently no signals that Yellowstone's supervolcano is on time. the verge of erupting. Apart from evacuation, there is only so much we can do once indicators appear. As soon as this event occurs, not only would our way of life change, but the global economy would suffer as well. If Yellowstone does not erupt, another super eruption will occur somewhere on Earth it at will. some point some, somewhere in the future. Else. Don't you think it's about time we get moving on that right? Mars colony? Man, that is scary things to think about, man. Like, I sit down with this, I'm like, yo, not, this is worse than nuclear war, man. We need, we need to find some way to get out this planet and inhabit other planets like sooner, sooner, sooner than later. Because there's a 100% chance that it can happen anytime, man. All right, so anyways, guys, made all the end. You guys know what you, man. Give the video a big thumbs up. It helps me a lot. Subscribe, guys. New turn. I post notification bells. Any other videos you want me to check out, put in the comments down below. All right, bye.